Welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide. Today it's part 38, Mountaintops of the Giants, part 2. Now if this is the first time you've watched any of these videos, I recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. If you've got any tips of your own, then stick them in the pinned tips comment. But otherwise, we you might have noticed that we have the uh, lance on and spectral spear, uh, or rather spectral lance is equipped to the lance as an Ash of War. And we also have a dagger equipped that has the Storm Stomp Ash of War. We're going to need both of them for the upcoming Frozen Lake. So the Storm Stomp specifically is for this um, invisible scarab that is running around this tree. Uh, you can use Storm Stomp. It's probably the best thing for killing the scarabs. Uh, I, I, other than like maybe Wrath of God or whatever. Um, just wait for it to get close and fire off the Stomp and then... In, for that, we get Dash of War Seppuku. Um, what does that do again? I can't remember what it does. Seppuku is functions almost like a um, like a grease, except Seppuku, as the name suggests, you stab yourself in the stomach with whatever you've got, and it increases the bleed buildup of whatever weapon you have equipped, or gives it bleed buildup if it doesn't already have it, so it's great on things that already do. Um, that plus jump attack buffs plus two bleed curved swords like scavengers curved swords um you're in the money because that is a devastating setup so here we are and we are fighting borealis now borealis is actually a huge pain in the ass if you're doing anything other than what we're doing and as you can see spectral lance spectral lance on the great lance now it has to be the great lance uh, specifically or i think it might just be called the lance i'm not sure if it's the great lance but Point is, on this particular class of weapon, Spectral Lance uh, will do three headshots while stagger the dragon. As you can see, we've landed on a three, and down it goes. And obviously, if the dragon is uh, is doing this, then he ain't attacking you. And if he ain't attacking you, then we're just smashing its fucking head in. And that is no. how you defeat Borealis, nice and easy. Now, if you don't have the... Um, the Great Stars, you can instead use Blood Blade on any weapon that can equip it. And it doesn't even matter if it's upgraded or not. You just spam Blood Blade into its face and that will do a, maybe slightly less damage, but like a solid equivalent. I mean, yeah, it'll fill the void. The edit there was a little ambiguous. What we did was just head to the very far end of the lake and across to the First Church of America. You can speak to Melina in the First Church of America grab one of the two remaining sacred tears um but there were people in the comments in the episode where we took on exikes uh saying that they think borealis is harder than exikes i do agree with that but at this point we are so um incredibly overgeared for taking out borealis that he really becomes a non-issue by this stage in the game yeah, at the very least for when you're presented Exikes, he's definitely harder than Borealis. And I would say personally, the rot is just like a huge issue. Now, just to make a point, we did completely annihilate Borealis there to the point where he wasn't even able to show off its specific thing. It does this big screeching uh, sound wave blast attack that can inflict frost and b builds up a hell of a lot of damage very quickly. So you need to really be um, aware of that. Obviously, if you can stay out of the range of it and just chuck lances at its face, you're not going to have a hard time. But otherwise, yeah, make sure if you are going to take on Borealis, you're at staying as max health as much as you can. Because he really yeah. can just deplete your health. And if you don't have enough health, and we recommend 70, uh, sorry, 60 at the very least, if you don't have enough, he can just one-shot you out of nowhere with that fucking breath attack. So he he did actually get the screech off during our fight, but thankfully you were far enough away from him that only the tail end of the attack hit you. If you'd been directly under his head when he initiated that, there's a solid chance it just kills you outright. There's not yeah. a lot you can do if it hits you. So be aware of that. But now we're using a stone sword key to head into the spirit collar cave. And um, this cave is pretty straightforward, except the boss at the end of it is... Um, hilariously like one of the kind of depending on your build one of the harder bosses in the game uh which is kind of funny but i um there's a hole in the floor there that we're gonna uh avoid that way we can just tackle this area properly and the first thing we're gonna do is uh kill these 
snail snake enemies, which, by the way, have one of the most horrifying grab attacks in the game. That's like incredibly rare. But if it grabs you, it can shove its entire head down your throat. It's fucking it's, the animation's crazy. Yeah, it is kind of spooky. Um, that is the gimmick for this cave, though. Um, there's lots of spirit caller snails in spirit caller cave. Go figure. Um, but yeah. no, what you need to do is completely ignore every enemy that isn't a serpent snail and just run and kill the serpent snails every time. So, oh yes. no, an NPC is spawning, but there's the snail, so you just drop down, kill the snail, and now the NPC's dead. So, that's there's your trick. Just kill the snails, ignore everything else. Same with this room here. There's a whole bunch of wolves, but we're not going to fight the wolves. We're just going to kill the snails, and then that'll fight the wolves for us. Yeah, exactly. Why waste the energy? And uh, that's, this is almost it for this entire cave, by the way. There's kind of nothing here, really. Um, it's just a few rooms plus the end boss. Yeah, yeah. Um, you do get a nice armor set here, though. Right here, I believe, the white yes. reed set. It's the same armor that Okina, Bloody Finger Okina, is wearing. Um, it's like the upgraded version of the samurai set. It's pretty good. Yes. Now, here is the boss. Now, this boss is... Um, what do you call it? This boss is... The Godskin Apostle and Godskin Noble, but summoned via the snail, and you have to kill them before you can kill the snail, at least from memory that is the case. Yes, that's true. So, as a result, um, they're actually slightly harder than they should be for us, and the reason for that is because we can't, you can't bleed the spirits. Um, so, what you have to do is uh, just pile into it with Lion's Claw and get in as ma much damage as you can, uh, because they don't seem to be quite as strong as an individual uh, godskin um, enemy, but still the fact that you can't bleed them is like a bit of an issue. But you can put them to sleep. So if you have the sleep pots, which we just so happened that we didn't, but we just figured that because we've fought these enemies multiple times in the game so far, you know how it works by this point. Um, obviously the sleep pots would make this much, much easier, but you certainly cannot bleed these enemies. Now, if you yourself have been using a weapon that isn't the Great Stars, say you wanted to try something else out, but you were still relying on status effects, say katanas or curved swords or something like that, the Destined Death and Black Flame effects will still work on these enemies. So if you really are struggling, you can make them um, a little less painful to fight by using a couple of the more powerful status effects, the ones that deal percentage health damage regardless of the uh, health of the target. Yes, um, if you look at the Moonlight Altar episode, the technique that we use for fighting Tish could actually be very useful there, so that's using Stormcaller plus Black Flame Blade uh, would actually be quite good uh, for, this, uh, ep for this particular boss fight. Or indeed Double Slash and Black Flame Blade if you're using a lighter weapon. Oh, indeed, indeed. But obviously, if you've been following the guide, as you saw there, Li Lion's Claw just is kind of good enough. Um, as it tends to be, <laughs> funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, we were rewarded with the Godskin Swaddling Cloth and, I think, Black Flame Ritual. Um, Black Flame Ritual puts a uh, ring of Black Flame around you. Pretty good. The longer you hold it, the bigger the ring gets. And the Swaddling Cloth... Instead of giving you increased attack power with successive attacks, it gives you health restoration with successive attacks. It's pretty cool. You can use it to kill Rykard with wild strikes. It's very funny. So what we've done here is we put wild strikes on our great stars when we went, when we walked back to the church. And now we're at this ever jail. We are fighting Vike. And I think this is for the second time we're fighting Vike, actually. I think we fought Madness Vike earlier in the game. Yes, indeed. I would say this is probably the hardest ever jail fight. Um, as you saw, even with Wild Strikes, if he was getting the incantation off, he just resisted Wild Strikes' effects. He can heal almost a full with a single flask. Not that it matters once he gets caught in the loop, mind you. Um, he is but... one of the few NPCs that can resist Wild Strikes for some baffling reason. So actually, he might be the second, the, the most or second hardest... Um... NPC fight in the game. Yeah, he, he's a contender, you could say. Um, I mean, still, Wild Strikes 
melts him. It just melts him less than other NPCs. <laughs> yeah, it melts him marginally slower than it melts other NPCs. Yeah. Um, uh, so there are that, some big things... dogs in this area, by the way, so just equip the Beast Repellent Torch if they give you any problems. And we also got Vike's Armor Set plus, uh, what was the incantation? Uh, Vike's Dragon Bolt. We got Dragon Bolt Blessing earlier in the game. Dragon Bolt Blessing is better. Um, because unlike Vike's Dragon Bolt, Dragon Bolt Blessing gives you a shitload of poise. And uh, Vike's Dragon Bolt does not. So I think there's some like arrows or something on the body here. Explosive Great Bolts. Yep, and I think that's like the only item to pick up in this little bit of map. We are uh, using the bow. I think there's one next to the... Oh, the rest, yeah, rise a, a is freeze not. in Greece, I think. If you got that right, I'm going to be very proud of you. I hope you know that. Same. I'm, I'm going to be so proud of myself <laughs> if, if, I, if it is a freeze in Greece. Uh, <laughs> because so, I'll be honest, I don't remember what this is coming up. I'm, so. I'm pretty, it's either a freeze in Greece or like a poison Greece. It's one of the two. I mean, I feel like given where we are, it's going to be a freeze in Greece, if anything. Surely, right? right? Surely. You would hope. And it is a... Uh, Ah, you know what? Don't. I'll give you like sixty-five percent credit. I'll like, take a fifth of a point. I don't. I don't deserve sixty-five percent credit. Okay, twenty percent. See me after class. Um, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, hopefully, you saw that we used the bow there to shoot down the balloons. We got a rune for doing each of them. Now, the enemies here, as you can see, these are the Thorn Sorcerers, and they can drop the Staff of the Guilty and Smouldering Butterflies. There's also some Fire Monks, which is this guy that I'm locked onto just now. They can drop the Fire the Monk's Flame Mace, the Monk's Flame Blade, although apparently that's only the one from the Giant Conquering Zero Grave in the last episode. They can also drop the Fire Monk set, so the Hood, Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves, and then they can drop Smouldering Butterflies and Fire Blossoms. Giant Conquering Heroes Grave will be this episode, not last episode. Oh, really? Yeah, we've not done the Heroes Grave yet. We did oh, the shit. Catacombs. Yeah, it was the Catacombs in the last episode. Yeah, never mind. But this enemy here is a Fire Prelate. They can drop their entire armor set, but not the Crozier. We picked that up from a specific Fire Prelate in uh, Fort Lithe in Gelmia. Gelmia Lower. Yes. So they can only drop their armor set because there's... They can also drop the thorned whip, but there's only one in the game that seems to drop the whip, and that is the one out. That is the one outside the catacombs in the last episode at the bridge. Aye, we will point out the uh, the singular fire monk with the flame uh, flame blade. By the way, yes. I don't know why the flame blade's so rare. It's not that good, and it doesn't even do fire damage. So weird, despite the name. Very irritating. It is very irritating. I was annoyed when I finally got one to drop. So uh, so we got a uh, Prelate's Charge Ash of War there. Um, that's kind of interesting. I mean, the the the, what, the Prelate Hammer? The Prelate the Crozier. Inferno, Inferno Crozier, yeah. That already has um, Prelate's Charge on it. Uh, and we use that for running through lava. Or you can use that for running. It's one of the options that you have. Uh, now, something that we didn't do at the last race was switch back Wild Strikes to Lion's Claw. You'd have had a much hard, you'd have had a much much easier time fighting all those enemies outside this little fort if you had Lion's Claw rather than Wild Strikes. I'll tell you that right now. So just that being put it said, back. though, there are some uh, NPCs in here. These That's flame true. guardians, so Wild Strikes will actually clean them up quite nicely. So, you know, happy accident, I guess. There is an NPC at the top here that you need to kill, uh, so I guess, I suppose, well, it's not the worst thing ever. Oh yeah, and this guy at the top is a bastard, by the way. Maybe without wild strikes, I don't think it even hits us. The, I mean, yeah, he's wielding the, spoiler alert, he's wielding the one-eyed shield. It's the drop you get from him. It's a shield with a fucking gun built into it. Um, and if that thing hits you, it hits like a fucking freight train. It sucks. <laughs> So, yeah, Wild Strikes will largely eliminate that problem. Unless he's already primed and ready to shoot you, then Wild Strikes won't do shit and he'll just two-shot you. So we picked um, up a Smith and Stone 7 there as well, just bear that in mind. And, um, yeah, up up here is the guy with the shield. So we're going to kill the dog in this, uh, dogs, uh, rather, in this room, because you don't, you don't want, they're kind of hidden, you don't want to fight this guy and then two dogs randomly fucking get you, you know? 
that attack. Don't get hit by that. It really hurts. It's quite cool. It's a very, oh, very good good item, actually, the one I killed. <laughs> this guy's um, having a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would be too if a fucking blender blade was just flying at your face. <laughs> oh, I just love that the, the Mimic Teal's joining in. <laughs> it's like he's in on the joke. It's like yeah, he is yeah. in on the joke. Yeah, the giant so prayer the... book there. Yep. You're getting very, very good incantations from that. Um, the fire incantations in general do exceptional damage. They're quick to cast, um, FP efficient, and you get some pretty good ones from that, including Giant's Flame Take, the, the single hardest hitting fireball in the game. Uh, massive explosion, very good damage. All round pretty Remember. great. Remember to give those prayer books and the spell books, you're going to give them all to the Turtle Pope in Leonia. Just so, just to reiterate that, that is the best NPC to give them to. Because he don't fucking die. You, uh, you, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't die. He doesn't move. He doesn't have a quest. He's fucking great. Yeah, um, and there's a grace right next to him as well. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. We stand Turtle Pope in this house. We do. Um, we do. You saw a fun trick there where you kind of clipped onto a piece of geometry on the building that you weren't meant to clip onto, but it meant yeah. that getting out of the building was a lot faster. Picking up the map fragment there and then resting at the grace in the... I guess you could call this the upper half. I would call it the upper half, the yeah. Or tops. upper third. Yeah, Depends upper third is probably it. more accurate, yeah. Depends how you want to kind of split it, I guess. Um, but definitely we're in the... the the second half of Mountaintops overall by now. And um, it's kind of like a sort of, not re not really hidden, but like it's kind of missable. Um, I think this is, is this the correct way? I think I was actually going the right way to begin with. Well, I think what we're yeah, heading well, for is... Uh, yeah, so yeah. basically we just head west-ish and then we're just heading this way. And there's a ton of hands in this area, so just kind of avoid them. There's two items, there's an invigorating meat, and then I think there's... Oh, it's not lightning grease, I think it'll be like lightning bolts. It's lightning something related. Oh, there's a holy grease. Fuck. Close enough. Yes. Same thing. Rapid use, myself pointlessness. <laughs> I know. We have Sacred Blade, we literally are never going to use it. So there's a somber smith in stone seven, and now we can jump across this gap, and this is the giant conquering hero's grave. Now, be aware jumping that gap, by the way, because there's a big hand hidden, like, off the cliff edge. So if you paid attention, we just, like, jumped straight over it. Um, there's no point in fighting it, but you also don't want to get trapped by it either. I think this is one of the more... Um... Interesting heroes graves. If I'm remembering correctly, it's another one that doesn't have chariots. So it's not as big a pain in the ass to navigate. This I think is another one with the uh glowing seals on the floor. That I can make enemies this tangible. One. I think. Um because if I'm remembering rightly, there are some intangible watchdogs down here. Oh, it's this one. Right. Yeah. Flame protect up. me, very good incantation. Yep. Um, requires a lot of a lot of faith. It's one of the higher level incantations, and it uh, gives you a bunch of fire defense. I think it's sixty percent fire defense. Um, but it costs a lot to cast. So if you're fighting something that does a lot of fire damage, and you're in the flame peak, that could be very very useful to have. So there's Grave Club War 7, and there's a bunch of the fucking watchdog enemies in this area, so if you really want a farm for the watchdog greatsword, then this would be the place to do it. Probably not worth it though, I don't think. And you can pretty much avoid fighting them for the most part, which is what we're going to be doing. This is another instance where you could use that same uh, trick we showed off in the um, Minor Road Tree Catacombs in Caelid though. Yes. Where... In one room, there are two of the watchdog enemies, if you can make them both tangible. Um, this guy just really didn't want to show up to work today, did he? No, he really didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, if you can well, make them both tangible, doesn't. you can make them fight each other. He, no, he's not keen, he's not game for it. Come on. We've got places to be. 
There we go. Yeah, so <laughs> if you use crystal darts on the watchdogs, it will send them a bit haywire and they'll still, still just start attacking everything at that stage. So, using Margit Shackle to activate the flame traps. Um, it's, co it's cool that this works for everything. Or rather, it's cool that this Monk's works for everything. Flame Blade. Yes, this is one of them that drops the Flame Blade. I do think that there are more than just this one in the game, but this is one that drops the Flame Blade. I think this is the only Fire Monk with a Flame Blade. There's a couple of Black Flame Monks with the Flame Blade. Possibly, But I think he's yeah. the only Fire Monk with one. Maybe one other in this catacomb. I guess we'll see. If MD wants confirmation, uh, I'm sure somebody's going to stick it in the comments. Please do. I'd love to know. <laughs> Engagement. It makes my brain itch that I don't know. Um. So yet another stone sword key that we've never needed to buy any for, aside from three. And now we need to activate the trap again. Um, and that brings the uh, the fire trap from below us up, which activates the um, I don't know what you'd even call that the symbol sigil. I mean, it's the symbol for the um, Erd tree incantations. So I guess you could just call it the Erd tree seal, but that's also a weapon, so it might get confusing. So we got the the cranial vessel candle stand weapon there. A surprise. Yeah, that's I... an annoying thing that happened. <laughs> yep. So uh, I ran onto the trap, and then somehow I like activated it to go down, and yeah. Um. Yeah, the cranial vessel candle stand though is surprisingly good. Um, I think it's a colossal weapon and not a great hammer. And what it's good for is it's ash of war. It has this. Uh, Pretty much the thing that the fire prelates can do with their head. You know, that big mm. explosion where it starts raining rocks. Um, they can... It gives you the ability to do that, basically. It's pretty strong. So I'll we'll send this back, up, back up because it yeah. activates another one of those seals. I believe. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Here you go. Also, just uh, to reiterate, the imps in this area, they can drop the Fort Hatchet, the Fort Greatsword. There's four different headpieces it can drop, so that's the Cat, the Fang, the Long Tongue, the Wolf. I'm pretty sure they only drop the headpiece that they have, um, but I can't confirm that. Uh, yeah, so they can only drop the headpiece they are wearing, correct. Sure, sure. Uh, and then we're going to bait the troll over into the sigil, and then do the, do the troll fight tactic, which is just um, head it. Oh, well, not that. Can. There we go. Although Lion's Claw prevented staggering from that entirely. You just didn't care that you got stepped on by the giant. Nah, like Lion's Claw just stay winning. It's just so straight through that attack. Literally didn't give a single fuck about that. Yep. Truly incredible. Another thing we stand in this household, Lion's Claw, which is good, by the way. Yeah, um, in case anybody didn't know, Lion's Claw is a good attack. <laughs> How could they have known? It's not like we've told them. Yeah, I know. Um, like it's, I think this might be the first time I've mentioned it, actually. I would, yeah, it must be, I guess. So, jumping off the edge here, here's a Fire Prelate. We're just going to ignore this guy in here. I think this is a... Yeah, it's a great glaive. A great... Grave glove wart and the That's giant plus seal. ten the boys. That is plus ten the boys, yeah. Or pl or plus ten anything you want at this point, but the boys. This is the room I was mentioning that has two um Yeah. Two watchdogs yeah. in it. Now they so kinda fuck up for me a little bit. This room legitimately isn't worth uh, do it like it's not worth trying to do what we're doing here. Fighting them even with the crystal darts just wasn't really good enough, if you ask me. But this is the way to do it. If you're gonna do it, if you really want to farm these fucking guys, 
you can make them farm themselves, I guess. But you need to bait them both over. You need to get them both active or not covered in that fucking shadow gunk or whatever the fuck it is. Get them into this sigil and then fire a bunch of crystal darts at them. And they should, should start attacking each other. But that doesn't mean that they can't attack you. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Now we just get far enough away and... Uh, there we go. That. See, it's... Look at look at its head. It's like it's like disoriented now. It's got like electricity or some shit. But like I said, that doesn't mean that they can't attack you. It just means that they will attack each other now and then. Like they so. certainly damage each other now, but it's uh, yeah, it just wasn't. They just, they just weren't playing playing along this time. Boop. There you go. And plus, if one kills the other, like if they don't evenly damage each other then you still have to contend with like a fully like a, a fully health one you know i mean yes but like you just said there you only have to contend with a full health one instead of two at full health sure sure so here we are up behind where we killed the giant you have to do that bottom loop to get the items from up there the pair of glove walls and now it's straight onto the boss I think this looks like a glove wart nine or something right then. Yeah. Big and what glowy. What is the boss? I do not know. Ancient hero of Zamor. You're fucking at this stage of the game, Jesus. I think it is. Unless I'm dumb and stupid Sounds and familiar, dumb and dumb. So but I think this is where you get the armor set and the weapon. So. Uh, Golden Vow, Summon Mimic Tear, and then... Yeah, uh, just eat him alive with Lion's Claw. Yeah. This is and not try a not boss. not to get hit by that. Like... Yeah, this is not a boss you'd need to worry about under any circumstances. Well, considering these were standard enemies in the Zamor Ruins slightly earlier in Mountaintops, no, you really don't need to worry about this. So, you know, you can use Prayerful Strike or whatever, but um, you probably just don't have to. Spam and Lion's Claw, just good enough, particularly with the Mimic tier. Voila, and there you go. Yeah, this is this is just a guy. I don't think anybody's going to have any issue with that. Plus, when he, he does that kind of crouch down charge move that looks like he's going to explode or something, yeah, he just doesn't, so hit him. Yeah, just wail during, on him. That, um... Yeah, it's free. Swapping back to Wild Strikes because there is an NPC coming up and this NPC can fuck you up if you let him. So Wild yeah. Strikes just doesn't let him. <laughs> yeah. um, we got this the Zamor armor set and the weapon from killing that ancient hero of Zamor. Um, the armor set is stylish but not very defensive. And the weapon is not very good but it has a very strong ash of war, Zamor Ice Storm. So if you have no other way of inflicting frostbite, say you're doing a quality build, like I was in my parallel run, the Zamor Curved Sword gives you the ability to do that. It is a curved greatsword and has this big frost AoE that procs frostbite very, very fast. So we are just going to quit out the game and then load back in because we uh, absolutely could not be arsed fighting those crows. Uh, Certainly not they're... at the same time as the invader. No, <laughs> no, they're just not. Wor they're just the least worth it enemy in the game. They really are. Um, so we can grab the grace as we're getting invaded. So if he does kill us, which he certainly can, because he is using, um, you know, he put, he's putting out a lot of bleed here. But <laughs> oh my god, we, we like pinged off the wall, and that's what killed us. Oh my god. Yep. As I said, this one is one of the few NPCs that might actually give you a little bit of trouble. Because he's yeah, quick, well, and he has a very, very hard-hitting weapon. In this case, it was literally the wall that killed us, not him. But I suppose whatever. so, yeah. And for that, we get the Okina Mask and Rivers of Blood. So now we have the full Okina set, because we've got the White Reed set. And we've always got the Rivers of Blood, which is um, basically a katana with inbuilt um, double strike plus... Blood Flame Blade. That is essentially what it is. Yeah, earlier in the game we were using Rivers of Blood at home. Um, yes. And so now, Rivers of Blood, despite the nerfs, is still very good. 
we have reached a very interesting point. We are now level 140. So that's quite cool. Um, and at this stage... What we swapped out was yes. the gold scarab for the crimson seed, which just makes all of our healing flasks significantly stronger. You can indeed use the crimson amber medallion for more HP, but I think healing flasks, healing more is better over the the length of all the healing flasks. I think you just get more health out of such a thing. Uh, now, at this stage in the game, this is probably now where we would definitely suggest to take off the Radigan Sore Seal, replace it with, like, the dragon... Uh, pretty much any talisman, really, but uh, the safest bet is probably just, like, the Dragon Crest Talisman plus two, I imagine, we have at this stage, um, just for the extra defense. And then we can switch that to the Dragon the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman when we get that in Far Missoula. But otherwise, yeah, um, particularly if you take the Source Seal off, you should actually see a fairly significant reduction in the amount of damage that you take, if I'm being entirely honest. Because not only are you taking less damage, you also have more defense. So you're also taking less damage and then taking less damage on top of it. So, from this particular angle, you want to shoot the Scarab from that angle and it rolls off the cliff and dies. That is my favourite trick from this area. That was something you showed me. Yes, and, uh, I was... I was very, very pleased with that. That's really, really cool. That Scarab is a fucking nightmare to kill, by the way. Also, Speaking of nightmares... Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, okay, don't do what i just done here, by the way. There's a Grace, like, five metres away. Grab the Grace first before getting these items. I thought I was going to be super swish. Grab the items, then grab the Grace. Nah, just grab the Grace, then grab the items. It's just it's just not worth it. This hand is a fucking nightmare. Um, also, weird that Matt, like, biggest hand was never a boss. Yeah, I thought that was strange as well. Although I guess it is kind of nice that the reveal of that thing is it just jumping off a cliff and crushing something that you thought was big. The crows. It could still be a boss. But it, it is could cool. have been. That yeah. could have been its intro. I mean, the Dragonkin soul just sort of falls out of the sky. So why not? So yeah, get get the grace first before uh, before fighting. Or well, getting those two other two items. But yes, also, please, I implore you, fight. Uh, not fight, but like that scarab. Do exactly what I just done from that angle. Hit it from there and it'll roll off the cliff because trying to get it otherwise, it's it's like a teleporting scarab, but you can't kill it with one arrow. So you'll hit it and then it'll teleport away and then you need to find it and then you need to hit it again. Oh, nightmare. Or you just hit it once, it rolls off the cliff and dies. <sighs> I love that trick so much. This area yeah, is filled with the uh, trolls, by the way, and they are all throwing the magic pots. As yeah. You can see. Um, so do your best to not get absolutely pelted off big blue balls. Um, Golden Rune 10. Yeah, don't waste your time fighting any of these guys. Just ride past them, because another big hand is going to pop out of the floor. There he God, is. This, just fucking horrendous. Yeah, it really is a wretched animation. Don't look directly yeah. at it. You'll get frenzied and lose part of your consciousness. Aye, uh, aye. <laughs> Highly recommend you don't look directly at it. Yeah, you'll take raw psychic damage. It's not worth it. Um, no, this, I think, is the last significant item we're heading towards here. There are lots of tiny finger creepers in this area. They all try and ambush you at once. Some will drop down off the cliff behind you. Yeah, um, this, this this bit of cliff is actually can be a bit of a, bit of a nightmare if they all can gang up on you. So just really suggested that you take care of these things. Um, as they're coming, if you just try and like run past them, I, I have been ganged up on mercilessly multiple times in this area. So yeah, the, the, it was it was it's just easier to fight them than it is to try and avoid them in this case. Yeah. Um, as soon as you get to this point, I think another big hand is going to drop off the wall. Yep, here it is. But that I think, um, aside from the couple in snowfield, is the like, one of the last crystal tiers you can get. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and that is the no. Crimson Will bubble tier, which gives you HP when you take magic damage for 15 seconds. So it's why if you've ever been in PvP, and you've been pelting someone with spells and they're seemingly getting healed, that's why they're not hacking. So, it is time to do the next boss, which is the Fire Giant. And for this, we are using, again, 
the rot turret technique. So we're going to be setting up the rot turret for the Mimic tier. So that is the Royal Remains armor set. We've got the Blessed Two Talisman, the Icon Shield. And um, we, and on our weapons, I'm pretty sure we have Prayerful Strike and also Thunderbolt. Um, this was my uh, preferred setup. And we've also got the, the Crimson Medallion as well. So we're going to use this setup to uh, summon the Mimic tier, force it to use only Rotten Breath, because actually rotting this next boss is a really good idea. Uh, you get a lot of value for money out of doing so, I think. It has so much HP, but personally I find that it, despite its gigantic size, it's quite hard to hit. Now, if you've done Alexander's quest, you can also summon Alexander. I wouldn't suggest really summoning Alexander because this thing already has enough HP as it is. You don't want to give it any more by summoning uh, summoning for the boss and you want to run straight at this thing immediately uh, that way you can avoid the attack but yeah summon in mimic tier when you've got the icon shield in your left hand the seal in your right hand and that way uh, when it's summoned in like this it will only use rot breath now we're just highlighting a little thing that you can do you can use the viper bite ash of war on the uh, snake shield to um, inflict poison on this thing it only takes two viper bites to get it poisoned so that's a little bit of free damage but I will admit, in testing, in the grand scheme of things, the amount of damage you get off it just kind of is irrelevant, to be honest. It is so, nice that you can do it, though, especially as fast as you can with the uh, the Vipers by Asher Wall. Yes. Now, the first protocol is to smash its, its left leg. It's the one that's kind of got this sort of raw open wound on it. That is its first weak point. Um, and then it will kind of like fall over and like, I'm in pain or whatever. There's the Mimic Tear doing its thing. But as you can see, when, this is 10,000 damage inflicted on this thing. And it's, what, a fifth? It's got like 50k HP or something? It's kind of crazy. It really is. These, uh, what you saw there was Flame of the Fell God. You can get that as an incantation in Leonia. It's the big floating orb of fire that chases you around. What you want to do to avoid that attack is get in range of it. It will flash and make a distinctive sound cue that you no doubt just heard in the video. And then it will pop. And you want to uh, pop it and then get out of its AoE. Because if that thing blows up, it hits really hard. Um, so, as do the flame pillars that he just cast when he put his hand on the ground. Just avoid the patches of fire that appear on the floor. And you'll avoid that attack. But that, after smashing the fuck out of his ankle, has taken us to phase two. Now, I feel that this boss, despite its huge size, is quite difficult to hit. Uh, when it comes to phase two, uh, it's even harder to hit, particularly because it can, you know, it has all these, like, like that explosive attack, the Fell God's attack, uh, the, the flame pillars uh, make it very hard to get close to without, you know, possibly dying. Um, so that's, like, a big issue with it. And when it gets into this phase, it just starts rolling about like a total bastard. So, this is why I found that if you're able to get your hits in, obviously that's cool. But sometimes it's actually just too risky to get hits in because it just keeps rolling about and it keeps swinging about. So, uh, that's why I was opting for Thunderbolt uh, to get some extra damage in. It's just it's just like free hits that you can just spam at it. Um, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it does enough. And also with the Mimic tier just constantly using... Um, Rot Breath, there we go, once it's caught, it, you know, it's still going to be taking a lot of damage. Um, I mean, honestly, the Mimic Tier has probably done more damage than I have this fight, to be honest. So, yeah, definitely suggest the Rot Turret technique is really, really good for this boss. I mean, look at that. It's just free. But as you can see, I mean, trying to get close to this thing is a fucking nightmare. With it being rotted at this point, it is dead now. You could just ride away from it on Torrent until it dies. Yes, this um, is also You don't true. need to stick around. Um, you saw there, actually, after we took a hit from one of the meteors, the, the kind of raining, exploding rocks that blew up on us, you saw the value of Crimson Seed in action because we'd gone to about half health and Crimson Seed healed us to full. Okay, hello again. So I'm going to present you with a different method for killing the Fire Giant, and this involves using Bloodblade, Rot Breath, and Tish. Pretty much everything else you use is superfluous to this method, aside from those three things. I Literally, no matter what I tried, I couldn't really improve upon this. 
So yes, what you're going to do is you're going to get on Torrent, you're going to have your curved sword with blood blade on it, and you are going to, you know, you might as well get a golden vow in if you can, but ultimately that kind of almost doesn't matter. Ideally, you want the fire giant to do this attack first if he does the the, the snow spray attack, so be it. But once he's baited into this attack, you're going to fire off as much blood blades into this thing's leg as you can. Now, this is what I'm going to call the first phase of this, because once you've done this and gotten down about this much health, which you will consistently get him down to, he's going to roll away and start to do this attack every single time you do this. So this is a very consistent method as well. So now you're going to fire more blood blades into his leg, and this should be enough to get him into his second phase, or at the very least very close. Now as soon as he gets into his second phase, you're going to fire off Tish, and then you're going to try and uh, rot him as much as possible. Now I don't have quite enough FP to get the rot off, but you know that's <laughs> easily rectified. You know I'm just going to use a, a blue flask, get the rot breath off, and then make sure that, that rot actually hits him. And um, once he's rotted, that's it. He's rotted, Tisha's out, and now he's effectively dead. Uh, you can just run about, do whatever you want, because Tish will, in fact, take care of him. Now, again, like I said, this is an incredibly consistent method, and no matter what else I put on, I've got the Lord of Blood's Exaltation on. It didn't really... I tried it, with, tried it on, tried it without, tried it with different curved swords... And yeah, basically no matter what weapon I used, I was able to do this every single time, which just goes to show you how good Bloodblade is. Now I picked the Nagakiba because it is very, very long, which admittedly is a benefit. But again, you could use a Scavenger's Curved Sword, you could use the Katana, whatever's at hand, as long as you've got Bloodblade, Tish, and Rot Breath, <laughs> the Fire Giant is dead. So yeah, hopefully this method will come in handy in future playthroughs. Using yes. a single flask, yes. so you really are seeing the virtue of that, as well as the fact that we don't have Radigan Saw Seal equipped right now. So you're also seeing the virtue of the fact that we're not taking that 15% increased damage. Um, for sure, for sure, yeah. And uh, it may have been worth stacking the Flame Drake Talisman plus two, which we have got at this point. We got it in Grail's Dragon Barrow, if I'm That's not mistaken. Also, yeah, that is absolutely also another thing that you can do. So if uh, you know you can stack that plus the you know the dragon crest talisman if you really need to stack some more defense you know you do have some options but i do think that this is gonna get you pretty far um now we now we are at the edge of the um the i don't know what you call it the big basin thing the forge of the giants yes but but if you want to do the Frenzy Flame ending, now is the time. Well, actually, you can do it at any point, but technically, this is the time to do it. So you're going to strip off naked, you're going to open this door, and there'll be, an, there'll be a, a, a little movie. And then you'll have this uh, very cool fucking burn mark all over your body. And now, you can speak to Hieta, and um, I think you get, an, you get the Frenzy Flame seal for this. Indeed you do. And you also get one of the funniest lines of dialogue in the game, which is my eyes, they're melting. Just the way that this voice actor delivers it is really, really funny, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a, a long you, you traded out waifus, you poked her in the eye, she's now on fire, and when you come back, she's turned into ash, um, and you get the frenzied flame seal from her. Yes. Now, bear in mind, at the, um, the Giant's Forge, uh, to progress the story you would rest at the grace and then there's an option that lets you um i think you sacrifice melina but yes. now if you've done this you don't get the option to sacrifice melina you have to sacrifice yourself into the basin but after doing what we've done um because we didn't sacrifice melina uh you she will now be pissed at you when you rest at your next grace which is this one um, now, what you could have done is sacrifice Melina and then come here, but technically by doing that, you get a slightly incomplete ending. You still get the, you still get, like, you can do that. There's no reason not to do it, to be honest. It just gives you an extra bit of dialogue at the end cutscene. You miss out on goth Melly Melly, but if you yes. do it this way around as well, you get the Iron Casa and the Ronin's armor from uh, Shabriri without needing to kill him. Yes, yes. So if you didn't kill Shabriri, you would come here and then get stuff. 
But in our actual run, quote unquote, uh, this that was separate footage that you saw. As you can see, we are back at the Forge of the Giants and we have the option to talk to Melina and then that she will sacrifice herself into the Forge to uh, ignite the Erd Tree. Whereas, well, just to reiterate, if we go without the, the Frenzied Flame and become Frenzy Flamed, we sacrifice ourselves into the Forge to ignite the Erd Tree. Indeed we do. And obviously by if by doing it with the Frenzy Flame, um, that, you know, fucks everything up. But with that all said and done... Yes, we're not going to be doing that just yet, because there's more to do. And okay, there we go, that's the mountaintops. Done. Join us in part 39, where we're going to be doing Consecrated Snowfield. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter, you can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out, and if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined, but the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything! Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.